exactly. And then, and I think, you know, be intentional when you document, you just described this around iteration, around study, around focus. And so if I'm listening to this episode, I'm listening to you talk, I'm probably thinking to myself, okay, do I need a tool like yours? Do I need to go and like hire someone to do this? What are like the two or three things you could give me in terms of feedback, some tips or tricks, if you will, to get started tomorrow? I know it sounds simple, but I want to hear you say it. How do I get started in this process to really nail this for my organization? I would say there's a couple of places. If you don't inherently have the skills and experience yet to even know what to do and to document, that's really okay. Um, Community, coming back to that circle of community. And I think this is why my community has succeeded so much in the last six months from zero to 1500 uh, and why my clients, when I launched this inside of their apps and inside of their cu- their programs, they see a swell of uh, customers show up in a way that they've never done before. Because what you're doing is you're trying to fundamentally answer this question for people. And this is, and I'll get to the, the core answer in a second is, is great. Yeah. people want to know, am I doing this right? Am I doing this wrong? Is there a better way? And if so, who knows how to do it? And so for me, that is the framework for the circles of community, the circles of partnerships, and the circles for live events. You bring those three together and you bring people together in a way that helps answer that for them in a live environment that demonstrates you or your company and your product as the solution to the pain points and problems and the role and job they're trying to execute on, which is why, and you have their attention, you brand yourself, and then you have calls to action success successively after the branding exercise that brings them further into selecting you or your partner's product as the desired uh, outcome uh, to help them achieve their desired outcome. And so if you don't have the skills yet to know what to do and what to document, you will find the answers in going into a community that is running live webinars and live events and Q&A, oftentimes with partners who are having either technology partners or learning partners, agencies, influencers, um, uh, let's say uh, coaches and trainers, Mm, find sure. find those th- those env- environments show up and ask and learn show up and ask and learn and people will sh- will will show up for you when you show up for yourself to help you get the answers because if the institutional knowledge doesn't exist which is quite often in common inside of the modern partnership department of one or two people <laughs> uh why partnership leaders exists why my uh little community exists it's because there's a hunger for knowledge and a desire to answer again those questions. Am I doing this right? Is there a better way? And if so, who? Um, there's a, again, coming back to Ella at Partner Hacker, she asks the best questions. She is the most voracious, detailed, like question, 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 strung together until she gets and she pulls it out of uh, the audience. She's 20 years old. And I think if you could put yourself in her, I think she's 21. She just turned 21. Uh, man, I, I envy who she's going to be. And I say, what does Ella 2033 looks like? We have a mentoring session. And I actually, she's kind of turned me into her mentor where there are people out there who have years and years and years of experience experience that when you show up for yourself and you ask these questions and then you actually go and put them into action into an effort it's rewarding to the person giving you that information to see you run and grow with it and so if you're in that position where you don't have the knowledge you don't know what to do and you don't know what to document find someone who's i guess like me right now effusing something that's activating an energy inside of you and says that that's someone i could learn from when you get that feeling i did that with Corey snyder uh last year two yeah, years yeah. ago and he yep. helped me through some just treacherous times in my partnership career and now uh we're meeting up he's on my meetup he's teaching people the things that he's taught me and uh, i'm able to pay it forward but it comes from Again, identifying and having the humbleness and then the um, a little bit of courage and bravery to put yourself in humbleness to ask for help. And not everybody's going to say yes, but the right people will say yes and they will help you get to the next steps. And so you can learn through mentorship. You can learn through podcasts like this. You can learn through community and showing up. And uh, my last little rant on this is community is just kind of so easy to find now in a way it wasn't two or three years ago, where if you want to learn about marketing and you want to learn about partnerships, there's partnership marketing channels, right? If there's partner if there's partner management and you know go to market strategy right you can find them and so find those people reach out to them when you hear podcasts like this go dm them on linkedin they will respond um i know it because i've done it i know it because also people do it to me and i respond and i do um, it all the time yep 
Yep. That's, I mean, the, the premise behind this show originally was that I wanted to go learn from people smarter than me. I wanted to go learn from folks who had already, you know, they were 10 years ahead in their career and had been there and tried something that I next had to try. And I could say, well, what worked, what didn't. And I think one of the fundamental things, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on this is, you know, as we look at the the sort of reflection period of the last year or so, partnerships has become this explosive growing industry. Uh, I, vertical is the wrong term. I'm actually tired and burned out on that idea. But this mechanism in go to market to grow faster, grow better, deliver more value to your customers. And I think when you look at the people that have been at it for 10, 15, 20 years, they're sort of chuckling in the corner saying, yeah, we know we've been doing this. Why have you all not been listening to us? And there's some folks at the sort of other side of that room that are saying, but it's so different now and it's so new. And I don't think that it actually is. I think we're just maybe changing terms. And to your point, we have access to where we focus a little bit differently, where we utilize resources a little bit differently. We have access to different maybe C-suite you know, opportunities. But ultimately, what I want to hear your thoughts on to kind of wrap up the episode today, we've got a few more minutes. I want to understand, you know, you've got such a breadth of knowledge and you've had so much experience, you said, in the last six months plus in talking to folks in a wide range of, of skills and opportunities and backgrounds what happens next? So you talk about you know building community, you talk about partnerships, you talk about live events as kind of your three pillars of success in that sense. What does the next year, three, five years look like as those mechanisms evolve within the community partnership and live event space to build those more cohesively? Do you think there's more of a togetherness that comes out of it? Is it more you know, reach in each of them, therefore they feed each other. How do you think about using those tools in the future? Yeah. So there are a lot of different types of partnerships and not all partnerships that um, I'm, the, the, the approach I'm talking about apply to this, but most, but most of them will. And so uh, attention and trust, the two most important currencies in the sales process and what partnerships and community and live events do is it brings them all together in one place. And so my prediction and where I'm putting my money and my time and my energy into community partnerships and technology is around the concept of what I would call micro ecosystems. And so there are going to be companies and I've been working on this and I'm starting to see it happen where the strategy of partnerships, maybe not the department of partnerships, because that I don't think is where the future of it lies, it's going to be strategically built into, and I'm doing this right now through those three mechanisms of partnerships and, um, and webinars and community, and I'll get to that in a second, is the adoption, the awareness and the adoption on the power of what ecosystem is. And I don't like using that word so much because it's kind of a little foofy, but I can define it more specifically for you as uh, the ecosystem is the tech partners and tools in the space that are helping the customers get the job done. The influencers, agencies, and implementers who are working with those customers to implement those solutions. The coaches, the trainers, and the course creators who are out there training the customers on how to get the job done better. So for me, ecosystem is that circle of all the different players that are influencing the outcomes of how companies and customers are getting their jobs done better, faster, cheaper, more effectively. And so for me, the micro ecosystem isn't everybody involved in the influence, but from your strategic your strategic point of view and how and where you sit in the ecosystem, finding the five to 15 agencies, tech partners, that uh, trainers, coaches, influencers that align with your ICP and stack together to help them achieve their job to be done as they move through the awareness, adoption, purchase, upsell, implementation, and expansion phases. So for me, when I see the uh, tactical, practical implementation of it in the future of partnerships, it is uh, an aware CEO or C-suite person who's like, oh, this is the influence map. Oh, now I see how siloed channel approaches on how we see things departmentally isn't actually how the world works outside of organization. And so let's organize and design around how customers are buying, trying and implementing our services and creating departments internally that are partnership infused. We have our product. But then there's all these other people who can play into it. And so how can we lace and interlace these partnership engagements, these partnership points as a strategic imbuement into those departments as opposed to a department of, stra of partnerships that is functioning as a silo? And so a real world example of how I'm not just saying this to you, but I'm actually implementing it is uh, I have some consulting clients who I help them identify, again, those three or four major types of partners, tech partners influencers, sales influencers, uh, agencies, and implementers 
that are out there talking to the customers and then building a mechanism to bring them into a, uh, so that's the community side, right? Here's the community and ecosystem. You can kind of use them a little interchangeably, strategically figuring out uh, who they are and how they can benefit our customers. And then right now the cadence is just like uh, once a month uh, where we're doing a partner webinar with one or two of the partners simultaneously. Now, like gym and exercising, you know, the goal is to get from one a month to two a month, two a month to once a week, once a week to maybe a couple times a week. Now, like everything, you have to build that internal muscle up. But the end point is that uh, at some point, let's just call it once a week, there is an engagement with partner infused events that brings each one of those together to demonstrate the common solution. And so that's the marketing side. And the back end side, I'm working with the product team. I'm working with the marketing team. I'm working with the success team. I'm working with the sales team. And so during that process, which is where my partner webinar.com and the technology I'm building is that you can lead score and capture the data points on what products do they have, what their pain points are, what is their tech stack look like, how soon are they ready to buy, uh, what level of interest do they have in upgrading their outcomes. And through that webinar lens, that partner webinar lens, you basically create not just a list of attendees, but actual segments that flow to the sales team, that flow through to the success team for upsells, that go to the onboarding team. And so it's not just a, here's a webinar, here's our partner, Here's our solution. You know, once a month, it's you're really holistically making recommendations around what your partner's integration stack uh, and how you can, uh, for instance, add air call, add LinkedIn automation. And you create this environment where you're adding your um, your integrations and making recommendations through this system. Brilliant. I'm going to slow clap. Hopefully folks can hear this in the back of the recording. I love the last statements you made around bringing things together. I love the cohesiveness you're describing. We're out of time. I'm going to have you back though, because I want you to do that again. If folks want to get in touch with you, where do they reach out? How do they you know, engage in a conversation? Yeah, I would give them three places. Uh, partnerplaybooks.com. It's the little community where I either share these things in more visual detail uh, and I bring on others like Corey Snyder who demonstrates the tech stack. Uh, partnerwebinar.com, which is going to be an evolving site. And that will actually redirect you right now to my LinkedIn profile, which is, like, which I sh which is where I share my uh, high-level thought leadership level type stuff. Brilliant. This has been a blast, Justin. Thank you for sharing so much valuable insight. Folks, as always, please like, subscribe. Uh, I would love you to leave a comment in Apple. Check us out on YouTube. Thank you, as always, for listening. And until next time, Justin, again, it's been an absolute pleasure and take care. 